Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future Technologies, poised to transform our lives for better or worse, are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used, or just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Juliette Lamar, and joining us today is George Waller. He is the CEO and co-founder at BlockSafe. Welcome, George. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, George, why don't you go ahead and start us off with uh, insight into what BlockSafe is and what you do there. Okay, great. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. So BlockSafe Technologies is a cybersecurity company that has developed solutions to protect what we call the blockchain ecosystem. Now, the blockchain ecosystem consists of crypto wallets, crypto exchanges, and then permissioned blockchains. All right. And so, you know, do you, sorry, specific products that, do you have specific products that go along with each of those things, or is that kind of all encompassed in, in one idea? <clears throat> no, they, they are, there are specific products. So for the, for the um, crypto wallets, we have a product called Crypto Defender. For exchanges, we have a product called Exchange Defender. And then for mm-hmm. blockchain, guess what we have? A product called Blockchain Defender. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And and all of these, these products, you know, do they work? Why don't you go into each one and kind of tell us how they work and how they'd be useful to us? Sure. Now, the reason, so we have a, a, a steep background of 17 years in building cybersecurity solutions. So when mm-hmm. we opened up LockSafe, it was specifically to address these very, very unique areas because all of them are under attack right now. Um, crypto wallets. I'll start with that one because if anyone wants to do anything with the, you know, in crypto, you have to have a wallet. Whether you use mm-hmm. a wallet on your phone or you use a wallet on your desktop or you use a, a wallet in the in the cloud, you have to use a wallet to exchange and and you know trade coins. The problem with wallets is they are under attack. Why? Because that's where the money is. Hackers mm-hmm. are stealing today an average of nine million dollars a day from wallets, digital wallets. And digital wallets are are very insecure. Most people think that they're secure, but the fact is they're very insecure. The hackers are using malware to essentially get on your phone or your desktop. And first thing it's going to do is it's going to copy your crypto wallet password. Then the next thing it's going to do is they're going to change out their malware will actually change your your send to public key. So if I was to send you my key and say, you know, send me some coins, well, as soon as you put that key into the, you know, into the send box, their malware actually flips and changes that key on the fly and inserts their public key in it. No one would even see that. So it's all behind the scenes. The key is changed. Now, when you hit your, your send button to send your key, your money, your tokens, it goes to some other address. Mm-hmm. They also mm-hmm. put malware on there to go down onto your device and get your private key. And if they have your private key and they have your um, and your password, essentially they could unlock your wallet and move all your money out of your wallet. So we looked at this problem. What we did was we built this product called Crypto Defender. And essentially, in it is military-grade keystroke encryption. And this technology is patented. So it's a military-grade keystroke encryption, which protects each and every keystroke you type on your device, whether it's your Windows computer, your Apple computer, your Android smart phone or tablet, or your Apple smartphone or tablet. And essentially, we encrypt each and every keystroke. When your fingertip touches the keyboard, we encrypt your keystrokes. And then we don't allow the hackers, the malware that's sitting on your device, to see your keystrokes. And if they can't get your password, they can't log into your account. Additionally, mm-hmm. additionally, we also protect that um, the copy and paste buffer. 
And that's a real dangerous one because that's what the hackers are doing is the malware will essentially grab your, your the public key and it'll, it'll basically swap it out for theirs. So we don't allow them. We encrypt the, um, the copy and paste buffer, a part of memory, and we do not allow the hackers to inject any type of key into that. And by doing that, we prevent them from swapping your key with their key. Absolutely. And to give people, you know, everyone knows that, that cyber fraud and cryptocurrency is being stolen, but some of the numbers are pretty staggering. Well, the nine, you're absolutely right. The $9 million a day is just a tip of the bucket in, the, in just 2018. Now, we're only, you know, seven, almost eight months into 2018. The hackers have already stolen over $1.1 billion would it be billion dollars in less than eight months? And that's what's known. And as you as you know, the, the, the number, you know, fraud is always like an iceberg, right? You see the tip of the mm-hmm. iceberg stick in that, sticking out of water, but underneath it could be two, three, five, 15 times larger. Fraud is the same exact thing, you know, underneath what you don't hear about, people squash because they don't want to know that they, you know, they don't want to tell people that they've been breached. But the fact is, the number is huge. No, absolutely, and and it's a constant, uh, you know, cat and mouse game with this different type of hackers that are coming in. Because once you have a solution, then they change their tactics. Well, yeah, and, and with any solution in the world, you, you're absolutely right, right? So the the good guy makes something, the bad guy jumps past it, right? And says, oh. Let me look at how they built that. Let me figure out how to get around it. So then the good guy goes around that and says, all right, we got to prevent that hole from being, you know, perpetrated. And then the bad guy jumps around that one. So it it does become, unfortunately, a cat and mouse game. What we've tried to do is when we looked at our solutions, see, we, we built solutions that are proactive versus reactive. Most most of the other products that you've seen, like antivirus on the marketplace, I, I still advocate antivirus. I, every machine should be using it. However, the, the hackers have figured out how to get around it very easily. And that cannot be your your only, you know, uh, your, your fence of defense, you know, protecting your device. You need to have specific um, technologies to protect your device, knowing that antivirus will be thwarted. And the way that we look at it is that we always assume every device you're on is infected. Therefore, Mm. we need to always stop the key login, stop clipboard capture, stop screen scraping, stop click jacking. And we're also, also a very big proponent of authenticating every transaction. This way, you're involved in the process because with one of our, with our, with our, you know, exchanges and you, when you talk about problems, you talk about, you know, 1.1 billion just stolen from exchanges in the last eight months is because exchanges are newer organizations, newer companies. A lot of them are crypto cowboys and they don't necessarily have the in-depth, you know, uh, uh, cybersecurity experience as a company like us that has been doing it for 17 years. So mm-hmm. therefore, they don't know the you know, they don't necessarily know all the nuances and how the hackers are getting around them using things like key loggers. I mean, just three weeks ago, the BitThumb was, four weeks ago, BitThumb was hacked, right? And mm-hmm. in the forensics came out that all the employees were getting lots of emails for a week to two weeks prior to the breach. So obviously, one of those employees clicked on an email that opened up, they opened up an email that dropped the payload of a key logger onto the, one of their computers, and then they were able to get the credentials for logging into their network. And once they got in, what did they go for? They go for the hot wallet. And that's why yep. what we've done, and what, what we've done is we built now an exchange, to, exchange Defender product, which is actually it's a bundle of two things. It's keystroke encryption for all the employees, and it's a multi-factor out-of-band authentication for the employees as well. And why that's so important is that that out of band delivers, um, makes the individual, the employee, when you log in into your, let's say my network, so I put in my username and password into a, you know, a, a web window, but then two seconds later my phone rings, but then I authenticate on a separate channel through my phone. 
and uh, our parent company happens to be the inventor of that using a phone, turning a phone into a personal two-factor authentication device. So when you use two channels to send your credentials, that's always significantly more secure than using one channel. So our dual, dual defense approach, which is provide keystroke encryption for every employee, but also provide out-of-band authentication for those employees, would have prevented just about every um, exchange hack that we've been reading about over the last year. And there's one more really nice caveat that they get out of it. They could also use our solution to verify their end users' transactions. And wouldn't you like it that if you were to wire, um, if you were to send a bunch of tokens out of your wallet right now, I would love a phone call to my phone to say to me, George, are you doing this transaction right now? If so, please, you know, use your, you know, swipe your finger. Our technology enables exchanges to do that. Mm. And that is that is game changing because you're not constantly worried if something's happening behind your back because it is it is vigilant, it is watching for you and authenticating in several different ways. Exactly. And if you think that's game changing, our blockchain uh, blockchain defender. Um, is even equally as game changing because when you think about blockchains, right? Everywhere I go, I'm talking to people every day about blockchain, and people are just, you know, they're amazed by it because it's growing so quickly. But when you think about the enterprises that are going to deploy blockchains, they're going to deploy an enterprise or a permissioned version of a blockchain, right? Because they just want their employees and their business partners on it. They're not going to open it up to the rest of the world. Like Bitcoin is a public blockchain. But if you're a company, you're going to run a, a private or, a, or an enterprise or permission blockchain. Well, in that setting, um, I do agree that the blockchain itself is extremely secure. It's immutable. Everyone knows that the blockchain is secure. And we're not worried about the blockchain itself. What we're what we were concerned with is access to that corporate blockchain is not secure, is not protected. All you needed to do is to be able to log on. If I can get into your, if I can breach your network, your corporate network, I can literally log on to your private blockchain. If I log on to your private blockchain, I could do all sorts of nefarious stuff. I can start to, you know, put up a new smart contract. I could start to uh, move money from your bank, you know, from your wallets and stuff like that. So what what we what we're doing to defend that is with our product called Blockchain Defender, which is essentially it's a suite of features in Blockchain Defender that's going to protect that blockchain. For example, provide that same level of transaction verification, and it gives the admin of that blockchain in that company the ability to put things like rules and roles in place. You, we, we have those for the corporate networks today, but no one ever thought about that for the private blockchain. So our solution will bring those same rules and roles, as well as transaction verification, DDoS mitigation, a firewall, and most importantly, a content filter. Imagine if I got onto, if you logged into your blockchain and you didn't know that your, your computer was infected, you can now infect your blockchain. And if malware gets on your blockchain, you can't get it off. So we'll have a content filter that will actually monitor what goes in and out of your blockchain to make sure that no one's trying to put malware on your blockchain. So that is a very, um, it's going to be the industry's most comprehensive security solution, cybersecurity solution for protecting a private or permissioned blockchain. That's so interesting and helpful. And, you know, I never thought about that. If the malware is on your blockchain, it's there forever. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, but it, yes, that's huge. It lives forever. Again, that's where the 17 years, I mean, what, what BlockSafe Technologies brings to the table is we have patented solutions. Our solutions have already been in the deployment phase for years and you know, have been deployed to millions of people in over 120 companies through our parent company. So we're using patented technology. We're using technology that's military grade, that has already has a proven record. Um, 
We have an experienced team of folks that have been together for 18 years now. All of us have been together for 18 years. We have some of the industry's leading advisors that worked for um, you know, Department of Homeland Security. That's the CEO of Security University. So we have a whole bunch of really, you know, very knowledgeable, very well-respected folks in the security space as our advisors, besides having our patented technology. Now, that, is, that is so fantastic. And it really is, I think, the experience that comes through because he trends over that amount of time. Absolutely. And there, there is, there's so much money moving to the blockchain, whether it's going towards the wallets, the exchanges, or the blockchains itself. So the hackers are always going to be looking, you know, they're, the, they're very good at pointing the arrow at the moving target, right? Because they have mm -hmm. something that no one else has. They have the element of surprise. If you think back to the Trojan War, all right, what was the Trojan War? How did they win? They put the, the, the guards inside the Trojan horse, right? And then they pulled mm -hmm. the Trojan horse inside the camp. And then meanwhile, they all came out at night and they opened the gates. So the rest of their, um, so the rest of their, their, you know, uh, their fighters could come in. Well, here, the hackers always had the element of surprise by launching an attack that you're not aware of. And, you know, you can't just look over the fence today and say, you know, um, do I see them coming? Because attacks mm -hmm. are invisible today. No, oh, that's, that's absolutely true. So if a company wants to get started with using block safe technologies, uh, walk us through what that would look like, how do they get started? Well, so we have the three different sets of products, right? The, mm -hmm. In, the, in the, the first two, in the Crypto Defender, um, we, ba we basically, we sell that through um, uh, reselling partners with a manufacturer. And they can go to our site over at blocksafetech.com, and we have links over there where they can go and pick up the product, and our partners are, are already, one of them's already up in production and selling it. So they could easily go there. So if someone has a, a, a crypto wallet, I would recommend um, before they do another transaction online, go and pick up, you know, Crypto Defender. It's under ten dollars a month. It's a it's a monthly subscription, and it's going to protect you know that money that's in your wallet. Because if your crypto wallet, your digital wallet, the money is stolen, your coins, I should say, there's nothing you can do to get that back. Once it's mm -hmm. gone, you can't call the police or the FBI or the CIA or the NSA. You can't call anyone and say, "Hey, money." I mean, you could certainly call, but there's no one there to do anything about it. So when your money's gone, it's gone. Um, so you need to protect your wallet immediately if you use a wallet. If you're an exchange, that's when they need to, you know, they need to call us uh, and we need to speak to them about, you know, exactly how their systems are set up. Then we could work with them to basically deploy our solutions to protect both their employees um, from the hackers as well as to to enable real-time transaction verification for their customers. And that we can work with them and get them up in just a matter of days, up and running. And as far as the uh, blockchains, we're building that right now. We, we have a, uh, a, we're in a basically our proof of concept phase. So we're still building that for the next couple of months. Uh, but when it comes out, um, it's gonna be a, a force to be reckoned with as you, said before. Absolutely. Well, George, thank you so much for coming on Future Tech Podcast and, and letting us know all about these fantastic products that we're all going to go out and get now because this is, this is something that everyone needs to be on top of. So I just thank you for sharing your time and your wisdom about this. Well, thank you so much. And um, it, it's so important that I always tell people, you got to think proactively, you got to compute proactively to protect yourself because there's always someone out there to steal from you. And we're, we're just proud and privileged that we've had this opportunity for the last 18 years to help make the world a safer place for people to compute. So I thank you for all your time today. That is fantastic. Everyone, that is George Waller. He is the CEO and co-founder at Block Safe Technologies. Their website is blocksafetech.com. Check them out. Thank you all so much for joining us here today on Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Juliette Lamar. We'll catch you next time. You have been listening to Almost Here 
Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, both to review and discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.